Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here. Today we're taking a look at the new HP 15T. This one features the new GTX 1050 and it competes directly with the Dell Inspiron 7567. However, I got this model for 649 bucks and it features an IPS panel. Let's take a look. Like I said, I got it for 650 bucks during the HP's crazy sale promotion. However, you can catch it on sale right now for around 749 bucks, which is still a better price than the Dell Inspiron 7567, especially with that IPS panel. Let's look at these two screens side by side. These are uncalibrated right from the factory. Doesn't the one on the right look awful? I can't believe Dell is giving their customers the short end of the stick. The 7559 had a very good screen and now this is just unacceptable. In terms of upgradability, the Dell takes this round. Just remove one screw and you have access to the internal components. With HP, it's much more difficult. I'll link in the description to the video that I did on how to upgrade the HP Pavilion. The base one terabyte hard drive is painfully slow. If you want better performance, step up to the 256 gigabyte SSD. Now let's take a look at the ports here. You got your security lock slot, USB 2, USB 3, and your headset microphone jack combo. On the right side, you got your SD card slot, USB 3, full-size HDMI, RJ45 Ethernet, and your charging port. The HP comes in at 4.84 pounds, and the Dell comes in at 5.76 pounds, so it's roughly about a pound difference, and you can definitely tell the difference. So if you plan on packing this in your backpack while taking it to school, keep that in mind. In terms of design, you may be actually surprised with my pick. I actually prefer the HP Pavilion 15T because of its modern look and just simpler look. The Dell Inspiron tries to stand out a little bit too much. Both laptops feature pretty good build quality. There's hardly any keyboard flex on either one. In terms of display flex, HP takes this round. It just feels a little bit more rigid compared to the Dell Inspiron. There is some medium flex towards the middle of the HP laptop. However, it's not too much for me to be concerned. With that being said, the Dell Inspiron 7567 felt a little bit more rigid. Both laptops feature 1080p panels, but the HP features an IPS, while the 7567 features a TN panel. Take a look at the viewing angles here. That is a big difference. Dell basically kicked themselves in the foot with this one. The 7559 had a very good IPS panel for its price range. HP even won up Dell in terms of display color accuracy performance. The HP got 70% of sRGB and the Dell only got 60%, which is embarrassing. The only department that Dell won was the display brightness. It was just a tad brighter at 251 nits versus 207 nits on the HP. Last but not least, let's test out the horizontal viewing angles here. Both units feature an anti-glare coating, which is helpful for gaming laptops. Even though the Dell is not an IPS panel, the side-to-side -side viewing angles weren't too bad. However, HP dominated this round. The base model features a Core i5-7300HQ. This is the latest KB Lake quad-core processor that offers great performance. This laptop features the latest 10-series Pascal GPUs. This one's rocking the GTX 1050. With this GPU, you can expect to play many of today's games on high settings at 1920 by 1080p. The only downside to the 15T is there's not a TI option available as of yet. Here's a quick sample of Overwatch running at 1920 by 1080p on ultra settings. So far, I'm getting an average around 48 to 58 frames per second, which is pretty good for a GTX 1050. Next up is Battlefield 1, again running at 1920 by 1080p. You can expect an average around 45 to 50 frames per second. For the best performance, step down to high settings at 1080p and you can expect an average around 50 to 55 frames per second. After about 45 minutes of gameplay, the exterior temperatures were still pretty good. You're getting a high of 46 degrees Celsius and the top section is usually the hottest at around 49 to 50 degrees Celsius. After 45 minutes of Battlefield 1, the GPU temperatures are usually around 63 to 65 degrees Celsius, and the exterior fan noise is around 47 to 48 decibels. HP recently redesigned their power brick and this one looks pretty slick. It comes at 150 watts compared to the Dell which comes at 130 watts. The 15T features a 4 cell 63.3 watt hour battery pack and you can expect an average around 4.5 to 5.5 hours out of a full charge with medium screen brightness. Compared to the Dell, which features a 6 cell, 74 watt hour battery pack, you can expect around 5 to 6 hours. I actually enjoy the keyboard on the 15T. It offers a very good comfortable typing experience and you get good feedback from the keys as well as a decent key travel. And I also enjoy the keyboard on the 7567, so both of them I consider a draw. The 15T only has one brightness level option for your backlit keyboard and the 7567 has two backlight options. There are two top facing drivers on the HP 15T powered by Bang & Olufsen and the sound quality is decent. It's nowhere near the 7567. It just sounds a little flat, especially towards the low end. The 7567 is definitely louder and it sounds more punchy. In my opinion, I actually prefer the image pad on the HP over the Dell trackpad. 
It just feels more precise and on target, and the multi-touch is pretty smooth. The downside to the HP image pad, it requires a lot of pressure to register a click, therefore I just tap to click. Meanwhile, the Dell Instapron 7567 requires a little bit of pressure to click. Here's a quick comparison between the webcams. As far as I can tell, it looks like the HP has a wide angle lens. Now let's compare it to the Inspiron 7567. See how much up closer it looks? Overall, I'm giving this round to the HP 15T. So let's get to my final thoughts on the HP Pavilion 15T. This model features the latest 10 series Pascal GPUs, and this one features the GTX 1050. The downside here is there's not a 1050 Ti option available. Besides that, you get the latest quad-core H-series KB Lake processors, as well as a decent build quality and design. For my money, I would definitely go with the 15T. At $749, or better yet, if you catch it on sale at $649, it just offers a better bang for your buck, especially with that IPS panel. Now if you really want that GTX 1050 Ti right now, you may have to settle with the 7567 or the Acer VX15. Hopefully down the road, HP will offer a GTX 1050 Ti option available. Alright guys, this completes my full review on the HP 15T. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to stomp on that like button and don't forget to sub. Thank you guys for watching, I'll catch you guys next time.